So what it and welcome to another episode for the Funky Pod. It's the time of the week where we talk about what's happening in the media. Media Prof reacts to and I cannot always only react to House of the Dragons, even though I really want to react to House of the Dragons again, because oh my god, House of the Dragons. I got oh god, I'm still so mad at it. Still Still, so I'm gonna cut this out and in the in the highlights in the highlights. So I'm still so mad at this this time jump. The hell! And then some people look the same as before, and some don't. <sighs> right now, I'm just watching it so I can talk with my students about it because many of them are watching it, and we talk about media and stuff like this. So it's great to have like a current example at your hands. But oh my god, I hate it. I hate it. I, I, and what? You claim a dragon by just jumping on it? <sighs> oh god. Okay, but no House of the Dragon talk this week. Let's not talk. Let's, let's give them a benefit of the doubt and let's talk about it. I know when the season's over, maybe that all panned out, played out, and then I'm gonna be apologizing. Okay. Also, what we're not going to talk about is Trevor Noah leaving leaving the Daily Show. After seven years, Trevor Noah said it's time to move on, which is probably right. And that he now wants to do stand-up again. No, please don't. Stand-up's terrible. <laughs> that wasn't Trevor Noah the guy that got accused of stealing jokes? And uh, I'm saying allegedly, and just like what I heard somewhere, somehow in the depth of the internet, wasn't he one of those people? And it's a good idea to go back into stand up if you're accused. Ah, uh, yeah. Huh? What? Should I should move on? Okay. The ghost uh, the in there said I should move on and not talk about people that everybody loves, especially woke, woke people. Okay. No, to f but to, to not just come across like a hater, I don't hate Trevor Noah. Actually, I thought he was kind of funny before he took over the, the Daily Show. Then he just became super woke. And I don't even see now I say super woke as if it's something bad. And well, maybe if, yeah, if it's too extreme, everything is bad, right? Mm. But like just being woke is not nothing bad in per se. It's just uh, too extreme either way is just not great, right? So when Trevor Noah has become a little bit too walk from my liking i did like his stuff before and before i heard heard those allegations Damn, i'm not getting out of this anymore <laughs> trevor noah still props for what he's done with the daily show because it definitely wasn't easy to take over from john stewart also john stewart's current stuff probably no one knows about it because it's on apple tv so who no one sees it right also on spotify but it's pretty lame as a podcast unfortunately to be honest um but yeah so good job on trevor noah for making it his own i guess um, I wonder who they get next. It needs to be a woman now, right? <laughs> okay, let's move on to actually Uniprof react to what? And I'm reacting to the Ukraine, Russia, Nord Stream 1 and 2. And now already YouTube is going to be like a warning, like you can monetize this video and like a warning because they talk about, let me say, let me say COVID 2. <laughs> All right. Back here, plugged in. <laughs> so, as you probably know, I'm not a politics professor, so I'm not reacting about the politics in, the, in regards to Ukraine, Russia, and so on, and Nord Stream 1 and 2. And I said one more time, COVID, just so that the thing pops up. <laughs> um, of course, I don't rely on my podcast to make money. That's why I can make those jokes. Uh, but so how is the media portraying it, right? So the media has clear stances on what happened with Nord Stream 1 and 2, who's the bad person, the bad actor when it comes to Ukraine, Russia, and so on. And I'm not here to say Russia is not to blame. Of course, if as soon as you march into another country, you're obviously the bad guy. So there's there's no denying, there's no argument there. Obviously. Okay. However, it's of course also obvious that it's not only Russia who has interest in keeping the war alive. The media has lots of interest in keeping the war alive, right? The media is like, hey, cool, we have something to, to talk about the whole time. People are scared. Hashtag moral panics. If people are scared, they're going to buy the newspaper. Eh? They're going to click on the articles online and so on. Okay, so panic 
uh, having an audience scared is important for media because if we are scared, we're going to read what they present us, right? Okay, that's one thing, one takeaway. And I talked about this on this podcast, like before we can talk about this again if, if the audience wants to, right? No problem. And uh, so second, second thing is now, okay, so now you're scared. And now what do I do with you being scared? Now, if I know my audience and know which way you're leaning, I can give you more content that you are agree with that still keeps you scared. If you are more on the conservative side and you say, okay, Russia has a claim to whichever region they want in the Ukraine because of the referendum and whatnot. Again, I'm not saying the referendum wasn't screwed or whatever. Let's leave this out here. But if you say, okay, Russia might have a claim there and you, you say the Ukraine and or the West should stop supporting the Ukraine in the war. Again, not saying is what's so wrong, but if you, that's your that's your claim, that's your stance, then you might listen more towards lean towards Fox News. For example, I'm not hating them right now. Don't so it's just an example. So then Fox News will be like, okay, so my audience, our audience is more towards that direction. So we give you content that supports those ideas and still induces fear of what the other side is doing. Right? Look at us giving all the money to the Ukraine, and we don't have enough money to care about our own people and and so on and you're like oh shit yeah oh, and what's going to happen if, oh no what's going to happen if it comes over here oh yeah right now on the other hand other outlets do the same thing like cnn for example on the other hand like very left-leaning right um so they're like yeah, yeah well so we have to support it because it's about democracy freedom of speech uh, whatever so we have to support them the ukraine of course we have to do the right thing if they stand up to the oppressor and if we don't do that, and you just if you would listen, look at the others, look at the right side, what they're doing. They want a dictator in place, and and so on. And you and you're like, oh no, I don't want this. Oh my god, just imagine what would happen if we let them do that. What what's next? What is Putin going to take Poland next? What's going to happen next if we just let him do it? All those things. Right. So you can see those two sides, and the media is more than happy not to mediate between those two the media is more than happy to keep splitting do like driving them apart because more clicks more views right so that's the problem with the media and that's exactly what's happening here right now right who blew up Nord Stream 1 and 2 it must have been Russia because they hate us but then if Russia if it would have been Russia they would know that that would be like a huge problem with everything moving forward in regards to the European Union and Europe doing any kind of business with them ever again. They know that it would escalate the tension. Like, would they really do it? They could just switch it off. Like, why would they blow it up? Then back comes a video from, from Biden, like from a few months ago, like, we will find a way to make sure Nord Stream is dead if, they, if Russia keeps doing this. Trust me, we find a way. Of course, now different media outlets use like those different approaches to play to their audience. So if you are anti-Russia, you're like, of course it was Russia. If you're like anti-Europe, anti-US, you're like, it must have been the US. They just wanted this to happen. Right? So I'm not here to say what's going to, what, what happened. Who knows? I'm just telling you. To not just blindly believe what whatever outlet is telling you, because they benefit from us not agreeing. They benefit from us like hating each other. That's to the benefit of every media outlet out there. So every media outlet out there is happy that stuff like this is happening. Because if they wouldn't, they would try to make sense of it. They would try to be like, Ask for the why, not just point fingers and tell us. They did it because they would ask, like, well, why would someone do that? Who actually benefits from that? Maybe it was a co-operation -op between CNN and Fox and they sent a diver there because they benefit the most from it. All the media agencies out there, or that was the media outlets benefit the most from it. Hmm. And then one of the last things that I found really unfortunate it was like when I watched a Zelensky video or no, I actually just read it, but that he said it, but I, I saw the video, but I didn't listen to the video. I just read what he said in the video. So I hope that actually matched. And he said something along those lines, like we are willing to talk with Russia about peace, 
but only under a different president. <laughs> Dude, you know that's never gonna happen. Like, you're just stirring the pot as well, unfortunately. So now even, even the party that's affected the most keeps stirring the pot. So if they stir the pot, you're like, but if they stir the pot, it, it can't be that bad. And of course it's bad if you're under attack. Obviously it's bad. But they also play the media. They all have to, right? We, you have to play the media because if you don't play the media, you don't get the coverage that you want, that you need. It's a super tough and annoying game to play. And as long as we all fall for it, it's never going to change. So what can we do? Can we keep screaming, stop the support for Ukraine or to keep screaming, support Ukraine, send them true, send them money and send the German, send them tanks and whatnot. Or should we be like, Hey, well, well, wait, maybe there must be a better way to do this. And a better way to do this is one, don't let the media put us into different teams. Because in the end, we are one team. If one of those idiots presses that nuclear button, then we're all gone. And do we want that? Probably not. And if I would be in the media, I mean, in one of those media companies that, that I don't know, drive politics, I would ask myself, how much is the rating worth once the nuclear button is pressed you're going to be like i want to be the first to, to announce that a nuclear button has been pressed or would you rather be second to announce that there's world peace unfortunately i think i know the answer and that's the problem all right that's uh, that's enough for this because now i'm sad so maybe next week we try something something uh, less serious again <laughs> Uh, or maybe even more serious if we're still alive by then um if you're still alive by then like share subscribe that would be helpful um rate the podcast that would be awesome thank you very much so more people can find us and maybe we can have a more open discussion about like what's happening why is it happening what can we do and yeah what do you think about that does it get to you do you just ignore it now like how do you handle all this this weltschmerz it's a german word we have like a word for like the world just hurts everything just everything that happens in the world just hurts like it hurts you it's not like that you're hurt but you're like i, I look around i see the news and it's just whoosh. they call it weltschmerz like literally world pain yeah so just just for you just just for information let me know how you deal with this weltschmerz the world pain and then we'll back here in the next episode for the funky pod until then do stay safe take care and we'll see and talk soon Saudi Cup. Oh, no.